Hi, I'm Jared Poche. I'm a senior support escalation engineer at Microsoft. I work on SQL Server, and I wanted to walk through a high CPU performance troubleshooting scenario. Um, we can, of course, use Profiler or X events to gather performance information about a number of uh, problems, but we can only do this while the problem is ongoing. Now, I recently had a customer uh, contact me and work with me. Uh, he wanted to get a root cause on a high CPU issue that had been resolved a couple of hours earlier. Um, he had actually not taken any steps to resolve the issue. It stopped as suddenly as it started. So we can't use Profiler or X events to gather data at this point. What we can do is we can rely on the procedure cache. Now, SQL Server stores um, the execution plans for stored procedures and queries in a cache, but it also stores details about the execution of those plans. Um, how much CPU time they consumed, how many times they executed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a DMV query to gather that information for us. Um, this query focuses on DM exec query stats, DM exec SQL text, and DM exec query plan. There are other variants of this query or uh, similar queries you can find on the internet quite easily. Um, this query is going to give us our top 50 execution plans based on total worker time, which is essentially CPU time. So I'm going to run this on my system now, and here's the output. Now, um, as we start to look through this, this is the main column right here, the most important one. This is total worker time, and again, this is uh, like our CPU time for our execution plans. We've got one query that really is head and shoulders above the rest in terms of how much CPU time we're consuming. So that's the one I'm going to focus on for right now. Uh, we can also see the number of executions of each of these queries, um, total reads, elapsed time, and here we've got our query itself. Here's the text for it. I could copy that out to another window if I wanted, but actually I'm going to keep going over here. This is our execution plan. Now if I click on this, I can look at the graphical execution plan. Our query is up here at the top. It's relatively straightforward. Um, this is against the AdventureWorks database. And vSales, person sales by fiscal years, is actually a view and not a table. So we'll have to get the details on that in just a minute. If we look through here, every operator has a cost associated with it. And we really want to find what the largest cost is and focus there. Now, we're seek against several tables, but those are really relatively inexpensive. We've got one scan down here, though, that is 94% of the cost of this query. If I mouse over, I can see that this is against the uh, sales order header table. I can see that we're searching the primary key index. And uh, scans in general are a good thing to focus on. We can see that it's taken up most of the cost, so we're going to kind of drill in here. Uh, first thing, um, I can also right click up here and have it edit the query text in case I want to execute this or if I want to uh, or if it's a very large query and I just need to see all the details. So there's not much here except a searching on this one particular column sales person ID and that might be significant. But we're, we're really going to need to look at the details for the view to get more of an idea of what the problem is. So if I script the view to another query window we can take a look at the details. Now again, we're focusing on the sales order header table, so we need to see where we're referencing columns for that table. Uh, we're referencing the salesperson ID, we're joining based on it, and we're using it to join to another table. If we take a look at the select list, which is this section after the word select and before from, um, we're referencing salesperson ID again here, but we're also referencing the subtotal and we're doing an operation based on the order date as well. So I'd like to make a covering index for this, but we would have to include all three of those columns for that. Before we take that step, I would like to know what the table looks like currently and what indexes we already have. So I'm going to open a new query window and I'm going to run sphelp against sales order header, and since that is in the sales schema, 
Now I could have just run uh, SP help index, but I like seeing the uh, total output for this table. Now as I scroll down, I can see all my indexes are listed here. Um, currently, we are using the primary key, pk underscore sales order header, to search for uh, data. Now, we're referencing, we're joining based on salesperson ID and we're returning a couple of other columns, but our primary key is based on sales order ID. We do have an index on salesperson ID, but we're not using that. Um, possibly if we were to change this to include the other two columns that we need to return, uh, we could get SQL Server to just use a, a, uh, a non-clustered index seek instead of doing a clustered index scan, and hopefully that will be less expensive. So going back to the query again, we're also using the subtotal and the order date uh, columns, and I'd like them to be part of my new index. So we're going to create a new index. Actually, why don't we... We will create a new index. We'll create one, and we'll call it missing index one. If I need to refer back to it later, the name will be somewhat obvious. And I'm going to create it on sales order header. Now I want it to be ba based on the sales person ID. Now the other two columns are in the select list. We're not actually uh, using a where clause or, or joining on those columns. So I think I'm just going to include those on the leaf level, on the leaf level of this index. So subtotal and order date. Order shouldn't be terribly significant, again, since they're not used in where clauses and not used to join. Now, if I create that index, ah, we will need to specify the schema again. That should create. OK. So we've got an index that should resolve the issue or should improve performance. To test it, I want to go back here. Now, this is the query that we ran. I'm going to have it run this query again, but I'm going to have it show us the execution plan. Include actual execution plan. So before we were getting a clustered index scan on the sales order header. Now if I scroll down, I should find the same operator. And actually, things are a lot different now. We've got an index seek. It is against sales order header, but we can see from the name indicated here that we're using the missing index one index, which I just created. Also, our clustered index seeks now, they were costing 1% of the total cost. Now they're 18%. I want to try and confirm whether we've actually done ourselves any favor here or not. So let's go back to the original plan. Now this clustered index scan, if I mouse over that, I'll see the estimated operator cost is one of the things that's listed here, along with the I.O. cost, the CPU cost, which it sort of adds together. Um, and our estimated operator cost here is 0.542. Now if I look at the new execution plan, and I find our seek against the same table, our estimated operator cost now is significantly lower. Instead of 0.542, it's 0 0.003. This explains why our clustered why our clustered index seeks appear to be more expensive. They actually haven't changed, but the query itself is a lot less expensive than it used to be. We can also go up to the top level, the root of our execution plan, to see what the total cost is. And our total subtree cost, our estimated subtree cost is 0 0.017. Our original execution plan was 0.574 and we can see again that that one uh, clustered index scan was the vast majority of the cost. So we've decreased this substantially and that should go a long way to improving the query that is consuming the most of our CPU in SQL Server. So I just wanted to provide this as a uh, simple walkthrough in how we can use the DMVs 
to, uh, to gather data and to help us troubleshoot. Um, I'll make this query itself available. I think being able to access the query plan so easily does help a lot here. Um, a key point to remember is that we're getting this information essentially from the procedure cache. Um, if steps are taken to flush the procedure cache or if the SQL server is restarted to resolve the CPU issue, then we won't be able to see this information. The procedure cache would be flushed if we um, restarted the SQL server. I hope you find this guide uh, useful and uh, you'll be able to use it on your own system. And thank you very much and have a good day.